topic today is about races. And what is the Bible or biblical answer to racism and race? All right. All right. So, uh, so there's a concept out in the world about races and human race in particular. And the question we want to answer today is, is that biblical? Is that biblical? So what is the definition of race? Well, uh, race uh, comes uh, from the concept that uh, um, we are all uh, evolved. These, all right. And so they categorize uh, people uh, into these four different, I think they even have a fifth one, but four different uh, types of, and they call these races. They say the Caucasoid, which is the European or white race, the Mongoloid, which is the Chinese and American Indians, the Negroid, which is the African and the blacks, and then the Aust Australoid, which is the Aborigines. All right. So now the question is, first of all, is this biblical? And secondly, the second question we must ask is, where does this come from then? Where does this come from? All right, so just a reminder. Uh, remember that there are two types of sciences uh, in the world, right? One type is operation scientist, right? What is the operational scientist? The operational scientist is the thing that you can observe, right? For example, if I put water on fire, I can observe it boil, right? We see that this is a property of water. When the water heats up, it starts to boil, and then steam comes out, right? So that's observational science. On the other hand, origin science is the study of data and then interpreting where it came from, right? And so we have sciences like uh, paleontology. We have sciences, uh, in fact, um, uh, pathology, right? What's pathology? You know, I had to, I had to train in, a, in pathology, in the field of pathology. And the field of pathology says, oh, I see A, B, and C, and I'm wondering how this person died, right? So I look at the evidence, and I conclude that this person died because of blah, 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 right? So that is origin science. And so in a broader sense, origin science uh, also encompasses evolution and creation, right? We were not there to observe the beginning of the universe, right? We were not there to observe the creation of this earth. We were not there to see all these things, right? And so what these two scientists do is that they look at the data. The data is all the same. And then they interpret it based upon their, their bent, right? Their view, right? Their view, okay? So depending on your view, you have a very different idea of how the world came into operation. All right? All right. So... Today, I want to start to show you what happens when your thinking is based on God's Word. All right? Now, the Bible is not only a book of spiritual things, of morals, of relationships, right? If you truly understand God's Word, you'll realize that it is a book of history. And not only that a book of history that is a revelation from God who knows everything. And so, the only way we can be sure that we have the right worldview is to start where God has revealed in his word, what God has revealed in his word, and building our thinking on that. All right? All right, so let's find out. So first of all, we're going to talk about what is the biblical truth about race? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 7. If you have your Bibles, please turn there now. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 7. 
the Bible tells us, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life, and man became a living soul. So God formed man, right? Very simply. Genesis chapter 2, verse 22 to 24, the Bible says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so God made woman here. And so God defined marriage here in the beginning as something that is between one man and one woman, right? Doesn't matter what the world thinks, right? Marriage is between one man and one woman. Not only that, it tells us their genders, right? Man and woman. There was only two genders, okay? All right. So, with that in mind... Right? How many races are there? <laughs> My friends, there's only one. The Bible says that there's only one race, right? You and I are family. Did you know that? Amen. Did you know that you and I are family? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. The Bible says, Paul says this, he was talking uh, to the Greeks here, or to the Corinthians, he said here, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. So, how many men were there when we start? One, One right? And then, Genesis 3.20 tells us, and Adam called his wife's name Eve. Now, why was that name given? Well, in Hebrew, it means that she was to be the mother of all living. Right? And then Acts chapter 17 verse 26 tells us, And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. So what is Paul telling the Greeks? In other words, we all come from who? Adam. Adam and Eve, right? Well, she came from Adam. <laughs> she came from Adam too, yes, thank you. <laughs> That's right. So we all come from one person, okay? One uh, family, Adam and Eve, right? So the next question must be then, how do you explain all the differences that you see in people Today, for example, so, for example, if you look around in this room, you'll see different people with different eye shapes, right? Different people have different ear shapes. People have different skin color, different hair, right? Right? And then you can say, oh, this person is from the Philippines. Oh, this person is European. Oh, this person is from Ghana or China or Korea, right? So you can see all these differences, right? But where did and how the, did these differences come about? All right, to understand this, we have to do a little bit of basic genetics. Okay, so we have to hurry here. All right, so genetics. All right, now I know now all of you guys' eyes are probably glossing over <laughs> science. Uh, <laughs> genetics. Okay. So, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going we're gonna to go very basic with this. Okay? We're going to go very basic. So, what we're going to do, we're going to start with the genetics of man, or sorry, animals, and then we'll apply them to genetics of man because it's all the same. It's all DNA. Right? And so, um, we're not going to cover all the complexities. We're going to cover all the basics. All right? So, you didn't know when you came to church today that you're going to be in science class today, did you? <laughs> All right, so we're going to always start with the Bible. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, right? Livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to 
their kinds, and it was so. So I want you to focus on the word kinds, okay? So this word kinds is mentioned in, in, during this in the book of Genesis about 10 times or so, all right? And so when the Bible states that, uh, what do you call it, that God made kinds, notice that each produces their own kind. Now we see this again in Genesis chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. And every living thing of all flesh you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. And they shall be male and female, uh, the birds according to their kinds, and the animals according to their kinds, and every creeping things of the ground according to its kind, and two of every sort shall come into you to keep them alive. So the Bible says that God made these kinds. Now, what does kind come from? I know Brother Chan will really dig this part. The Hebrew word for kind comes from this Hebrew word up here, if you don't know how to read Hebrew. Uh, <laughs> yes, it means mean, right? It comes from the Hebrew word mean. So what does that word mean? <laughs> All right, what does that word mean? What does the word mean mean? Okay, so when you look at animal classifications, all right, we classify animals like this. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. All right? Right? So these are the classifications of the different animals uh, in our world. All right? And so where does the word mean? If you translate the word mean, where does it come from? Or where, what does it point to? Well, if you study the Hebrew, it actually points to this. So it actually goes to the family classification, right? Family classification, okay? So originally, it actually went under species of, family, of classification, but that changed over time. And now species means something totally different. And now... It is now, what it means now, if you look at the English and you look at the Hebrew meaning, it actually means family, okay? So, an atheist will tell you this. How did, if you believe in Noah's Ark, how did all these species get onto the Ark, right? How did all these species? They're literally, now, now I think we know probably billions of species on the planet of this earth, right? How did all these species get on the earth, on, on the ark? And then they laugh at us as creationists. How did that happen? And actually, yeah, that's right, actually the Bible says that it was what that went on the ark? Kinds, Kinds or families, right? So let me ask you, well, let me tell you this. First of all, how many Family classifications of animals are there. There's about, if you want to be generous, about 1,400. Actually, creation scientists say, scientists who believe in, cre in creation say that actually there's probably less than 1,000, right? So if God was preserving kinds of animals, would they all fit on the ark? Yeah. Easily. The, there were so many uh, uh, space, so much space on the ark. So what is a good example of this? Aw, my favorite dog. <laughs> Yorkshire Terrier, Terrier. Okay. So dogs are of the family Canidae, right? Canidae, right? So, and what's nice about dogs, and it's really nice about this, is that they are a great example because there are many species in the family of dogs. Not only that, number one. Number two, we have tons of information, genetic information, about uh, each breed. We know that this breed bred with this breed, and it became this breed, breed or species. That's the same thing. You, you can interchange that, right? And then this breed didn't breed with this breed, but it bred with this breed and became... They're Yorkshire Terrier, right? And so on and so forth. So we have so many, so much information. But one thing you see, if you look at the genes, we know that they are all 
interconnected with each other. So what scientists tell us is that they are all of one kind or of one family, right? So this is all one family. Canidae, also cat, right? What is a cat? Felidae, right? What's under the cat species, uh, family? Lions, tigers, all the way down to your little home cat, right? So I'm getting to a point here in this science class, okay? Please hold on. Don't fall asleep. Okay, so based on the genetic, morphological, so morphological and behavioral data, it is clear that the domestic dog originates from the wolf. So this is what scientists tell us. All the dogs that we have in this world, they come from the, do the wolf. The wolf is considered the original dog. Why? Because it has all the genetic information, right? So, the wolf, so, I'm going to keep showing the Yorkie because I love the Yorkie. <laughs> the Yorkie, right, is still in the family of the, the wolf, right? The, I don't know what this is. <laughs> Pomeranian, I think. <laughs> Pomeranian is part of the family of wolf, right? And look at this. What about these guys? Also, chihuahuas, poodles, right? All are in the family of wolves, right? What about the Datsund, right? All a part of the wolf, right? So notice, can you see the differences? Right? There's a, a big difference. Look at this. You go from this to, hurry, this. There's a huge difference, right? Right? So these are all considered, what? The same family, right? They're all considered the same as the wolf, right? So what you need to know is that something happens in, genetically in speciation, OK? So when you start from the wolf and, and uh, and this wolf has babies with other babies, and these babies, and they become something else. Anyway, so what happens is when they begin to speciate, right, something begins to happen. You begin to lose genetic uh, information. So, bottom line is, speciation has nothing to do with evolution. Evolution requires brand new information that never existed added to the genes. Did you know that? That's what, when you go to pu your public school, when you go to the History of Natural Museum, right, this is what they teach you. Evolution requires that you add new information. But speciation, just simply looking at the dog, scientists see that as the dog speciates, Canada speciates, it loses information. And so when you, what you actually see, right, is that when you look at all these breeds, you notice that there's actually a loss of information. So how do you get these species? All right. So in genetics, there is a convention where we uh, letter, label genetics with letters. Big A, little A, big B, little B, little B, big C, little C, right? And so these uh, genetics or these genes, these letters represent dominant genes and recessive genes. So in the human, there's 20 to 30 thousands of these. All right? So let's say two dogs, they get together, and they have a puppy, right? And, well, that puppy, right, gets a combination between mom and dad, right? And what happens? The puppy comes out. Now, as you can see here, if you notice the, the gene combination, what happened? They lost the... Recessive gene, right? So this, this little guy has A, A, B, B, C, C, right? It's, this is how the, babe, the puppy came out, right? We see that in humans, too. This is the same thing that happens over and over again. So now, that being said, right, God made the kinds of animals, right? And sometimes, 
we make mistakes in church, right? We say, God made all the animals that we see today, right? Is that true or not? <laughs> he made what? What did the Bible tell us? He made the families, right? So then how did speciation happen, right? How did speciation happen? Or how did all these animal things came out? So uh, if you want to go back from a Yorkie to the original dog, the wolf, you can't. Why? Because what? There was loss of genetic information, right? The Yorkie didn't evolve into the Pomeranian, which didn't evolve into the uh, Dotson, which didn't evolve into the German Shepherd, which didn't evolve into the Coyote, which, so it, didn't go, it doesn't go that way. That's what evolution teaches, right? But rather, the dog, the, the, uh, the, what is it, the family, right, the wolf, became speciated, and it changed, and it changed, and it changed, until, right, you got the Yorkie. So theoretically, the wolf can become a Yorkie, but the Yorkie cannot become a wolf, right? So God made kinds, all right? God made kinds. So how are species made, all right? How are species made? Well, we'll talk a little bit about genetics here, and then we're going to uh, uh, have our conclusion. All right, so if you take one man here and one woman in the audience, how many children, right, can that person have, can those two people have, without those children being, looking exactly the same, looking like they're exactly the same? How many? Okay? It, based upon our gene pool, how many? Right? Well, it's 10 to the 2017. So do you, do you know how big that number is? It is an astronomical number. In fact, did you know, do you know how, what, what scientists are saying is, do you know how many atoms are in the universe? 10 to the 80, right? How many genetic combinations are there in you and I genes? How many? 10 to the 2017, right? 10 to 2017. So when you start to realize that God put this sort of genetic diversity in the dog kind, in the cat kind, in the elephant kind, in mankind, you can see, you can begin to see that there are so many species. So the question is, how are species formed? All right. So when the animals came off the ark, they began to do what? multiply and they began to move away from each other and each animal's offspring began to have a different combination of genes some genes become dominant other becomes recessive and this is dependent on the environment right and so you get different species and different uh, uh, what do you call it uh, breeds and everything and so our kids are told that this is evolution but this has nothing to do with evolution. It's the opposite of evolution. For example, let's say two dogs get together and they have the S and L gene. S is for short hair, L is for long hair. So you put these two genes together, then you get medium hair. All right, medium hair. All right, so let's say they have babies, okay? And one baby gets, okay, the SS combination, right? So they get the two short hairs, and what happens to that dog? It comes out with what? Short hair, right? And then one of the, one of the puppies gets the SL gene, and so they come out with medium hair. And then the other dog, other puppy, gets LL genes, and they come out with long hair, right? Now let me ask you this. The evolution will say, oh, look, something new happened. It's evolved. Let me ask you this. Was there any new information added? 
All right? No. What is new is what? The combination, right? Not the genetic information. So the puppies have less genes than the, or less gene expression than the parents, right? So there's nothing new. Let's look at Darwin's finches, right? When he went to the Galapagos, what did he find? Finches with big beaks and little beaks, right? He's got, and, and they are finches with big beaks and li little beaks. But this is not evolution, right? It's not evolution. It is that these finches did what? They had different combinations. And some finches got bigger beaks and some big finches got little beaks. So this is what they call natural selection adaptation resulting in speciation. So I don't know if you heard that phrase before in evolution, right? But they're taking this phrase and they're changing its meaning, all right? Did you know that we believe that too? Natural selection, adaptation, that means the environment. So natural selection means some, an animal gets selected how? Through the environmental uh, uh, influences. And what happens? It results into a speciation, right? So let me, let me say this, okay? So let's illustrate this. So imagine that these dogs go to a colder climate, all right? It's really cold. The dogs with the shorter hair, the SS genes and the SL genes, a medium coat, they're going to die. Why? It's too cold. Dogs with the LL genes are going to survive. That's why when you go to Alaska, what do you see? You see the Alaskan Malamute, right? That dog, that species of dog has what? Big fluffy hair, right? And we have a, one of our neighbors uh, uh, has a, like a I think they breed them. But here in Washington State, in the summer, they said they get so hot, right, that they can barely make it, right? And so what happens? What happens? All those short-haired dogs and medium-haired dogs die, and so the long-haired do dogs get together, they have babies, and what happens? They have long hair babies, right? So what happens? The genes, what do they do? They concentrate. And boom, you have a species, right? And those with, uh, let's say those, again, let's say these dogs, these, another set of dogs go to a hot climate, right? And those with long hair and medium hair, they, they die. Why? Because it's what? Too hot, right? And when you look at uh, the wild African dogs, what kind of hair do they have? They have, all have? Short hair. And they get together and reproduce. And what do they have? Short hair. And so their genes get together and do what? Concentrate and they become short hair dogs, right? So new combinations. So what is natural selection? Okay. New combinations of already existing information, number one. Number two, loss of information. And number three, conservation or conserving of the information that is present, right? So now there is no new information, right? It is the opposite of evolution, right? You see, the interpretation of that was wrong. The scientific data says natural selection through adaptation and speciation, right? The, the, the evolutionist says, oh, that's evolution, right? Evolution, this, this is how evolution goes. But no, the creationist says, that's speciation. No new information. It's just a conserving of genes. So natural selection is the opposite of evolution, all right? And so we have never, ever observed, never, ever observed in the wild, the adding of genes to an to a animal. It has always been a loss, okay? Right? When you look at wolves and coyotes, look at the top two here. They look exactly, almost exactly the same, right? If you're a creationist, that's thousands of years of speciation, right? Th 
thousands of years of speciation, right? Do they look any different? Not really, right? You have the, even the fox, right? That's just out of nature. What about dog breeds? Actually, dog breeds were created artificially over 338 years. Okay? That's how long it took to create the dog breeds. And how were they created? Man said, oh yeah, we need a dog to get rats out from underneath our house. So they started breeding dogs. They breed them, breed them, breed them, boom, out pops a Datsun. <laughs> okay? They said, ah, this dog is perfect for the job. Right? What happened? Man just found the desirable traits, took out those genes by breeding, breeding, breeding until they got the dog that they wanted, right? And that happened over a couple hundred years, right? So that is natural selection, okay? In, the, in dog breeds, it's artificial selection. <laughs> what about humans? All right, humans. So when we look at humans, we see Asians. Caucasians, Africans, right? We see uh, all these things, right? Now, we found out that in humans, there's 20 to 30,000 genes, right? So, for this to happen to us, right? How do we get Asians? How do we get Caucasians? How do we get Africans, right? How do we get all this, right? For this to happen, humans needed to be, first of all, separated out, and isolated from each other, right? So can you think of any event that caused this? I want to show you. Tower of Babel. Genesis chapter 11, verse 7 to 9. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth. And they left all the, 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 uh, off the building of the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. So what did God do? Because humans were all one kind. In fact, I'm sure they all looked like each other, right? But then God said, at the Tower of Babel, we need to... Spread them out, right? We need to spread them out. So what did he do? He, God did what? He confused all the languages. And so people started congregating together. And what did they do? They went, the Bible tells us, they went scattered across the earth. How do we get speciation? How do we get differences in genetics? Through environmental factors, right? Through environmental factors factors. All right. Now we're getting to the crux of it, and we're going to close here soon. So, when Charles Darwin published his book, all right, The Origin of Species, uh, this was his, the title of the book. All right. goes like this. On the origin of species by means of natural selection, or the preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. All right? Now, this book was about animals. He was referring to races as animals, okay? But at the end of this book, he said this. So he was, he was, he was saying the different races were referring to the animal races, okay? At the end of this book, he said this. In the distant future, light will be thrown on the origin of man and his history. All right? So he had intended to apply evolution to man. Now, of course, Darwin at that time didn't have an electron microscope, so he didn't understand genetics. So what did Darwin do? Twelve years later, he wrote another book called The Descent of man, all right? And in this book, you'll find something very interesting, okay? He, said, he wrote this. At some future period, not, very, not uh, very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost completely exterminate and replace 
the savage races throughout the world. And I'll read just uh, the red parts here because we're running out of time. The break between man and his nearest allies will be wider, for it will intervene between man in a more civilized state. So what he's saying, his nearest allies are who? Where man has come from. So in other words, apes, monkeys, all that stuff. Now notice what he says here. Then the Caucasian, and some ape as low as a baboon, baboon, instead of as now between the Negro or the Australian Aborigine and the gorilla. So what is he saying here? What Darwin is saying is that the Ab Aboriginal, Aborigine and the Africans are closer to apes than Caucasians. Well, let me ask you this. Is that racist? That is a very racist statement. Where did we get racism? It's from evolution. It's from evolution. It's not a biblical concept. It is evolution. Right? Now, you know, in, in this society now, <laughs> you find if you say anything racist, what happens to you? You become canceled, right? We're in this woke culture, right? You get canceled, right? Oh, cancel him because he said something racist, right? I think Darwin should be banned. Why are they banning the Bible in public schools? They should be banning Darwin. The Bible doesn't teach racism. The Bible teaches that we're all one race, one family. But Darwin teaches, oh, no. The darker you are, the closer you are to the ape or the monkey. What? Did you know that in Australia, they actually killed Aborigines because they thought that they were closer to monkeys and apes? Hitler thought that Jews were closer to apes and monkeys. There was a biology book in the 1920s that was the curriculum for the United States. And it was a book by George William Hunter, and the title was A Civic Biology. Uh, this was based on evolution, all right? And this is what it said, all right. So at present time, there exists upon the earth five races, and uh, the highest of all are the Caucasians, represented by the civilized white inhabitants of Europe and America. Is that evident to you there? That evolution breeds what? Racism. Racism, right? Where did we get these classifications? Caucasoid, mongoloid, necroid, australoid. Did you know that this is also an, in hierarchy order, right? What the secular, secularists believe is the highest race to the lowest race, right? Where did this classification come from? Was it from God? No, it was from Darwin, right? So this is our close here. What's God's answer to races and racism? We are what? One race. Now let me, ask, let me tell you this. The Bible, right? Science confirms the Bible. Let's go quickly here. All right. All right, so in, in the article, The Destructive Nature of the Term Race, it says here, evidence continues to collect that the term race is meaningless used to point out differences in people that are not definitive. All right? Human Genome Project, after, in the 2000s, after they had mapped out the human genome, they said here that they unanimously declared that there is only one race, the human race. You know what a Christian should have been telling, tell, telling these people? Ha ha, I told you so. I told you so. We are all descendants of Adam and Eve. See, the Bible is right, right? Okay, going on. Oh. So, in the article, Genetic Verifications, Classifications and Race, humans vary only slightly at the DNA level. All right? All right? And, and that, that only, only a small, small proportion, proportion of this, of this variation, variation separates, separates the, the continental, continental 
uh, populations, right? So, so notice what they, they say, say here, that, that humans only vary very slightly. slightly. In, In fact, fact, going, going on, on, right? right? Uh, let's, let's go, go here. here. All right. Tiny gene differences, differences make us who we are. This is an article uh, in the Science uh, magazine here, uh, February 4th, 2008. But the genes that explain the phenotypic differences, hair, color, eye, shape, that's what it means, between the populations only represent a tiny, okay? I think 1% of our genome. Part of our genome, confirming once again that the concept of race from a genetic standpoint has been abolished. All right? So, so, race, race is, is, or race is, is, is a is wrong concept, concept right? right? So, so let me ask, ask you this. this. Are we are different we colors, colors, or are, are we, we different, different shades? shades? <laughs> right? right? We, we are, are different, different shades, shades right? right? All right? If, if I was, was to have, have a Caucasian, Caucasian here, here standing, standing next to me, me Right? right? And they say, they say we, we, we say, say they're, they're white. white. This, this is, is white. white. Okay? okay? Are, Are you, you white? white? If, if I, I saw, saw this in the, the clinic, clinic, I had a kid, kid that was like this. Their, their face looked like this. Like we would say, 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 oh no, call the ambulance! They're white. I did call the ambulance, actually. That person had a perforated appendicitis. Without surgical care, they would have died in about eight hours or so, right? right. We're, We're not, not colors, colors right? right? We are different shades, right? We are, we are different, different shades. shades. In, in fact, fact, in our, our skin, skin, we have, we have something called melanocytes, melanocytes. And, they and they give, give off, off, they give off white pigment, 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 pigment or yellow pigment, pigment or red pigment, pigment or black pigment. pigment. No, no, they, they give, give off brown pigment, pigment. okay? They give off brown pigment. So. Uh, <clears throat> so, so skin, skin is a is color, color, skin, skin color, color is an expression of genes, genes right? right? And, and we, we have, have several different, different gene uh, expressions, right? A, A, B, B is a lighter shade of brown. A, big A, little A, big B, little B is a middle shade of brown. And big A and big B is a darker shade of brown. And there's a, there's tons of combinations of this, right? And but, but the majority, majority of the bell, bell curve on this world is in the middle shade of brown, okay? okay. And, and so, so if, if genetic, genetic variation is true, true all right, right, can, can there, there be genetic, genetic variations within, within families? families? Yes. yes. Twins. twins. Do you know, you that, know that these are twins? twins. Look at their Look skin, skin color. color. Is there is genetic, genetic variation? variation? Does this prove the Bible? Bible. Yes, yes, it does. It does. Right? right? These, These are, are sisters. sisters. They, they are. are they, they come from the same egg. egg. Okay? okay? They, they come, come from the same egg. egg. The egg, egg split. split. And guess, guess what we got? Now you would think that the kid on the right here is what? African American, right? And the kid on the left is Caucasian, right? And if and you were to say, oh, they're from the same family, family you, you would have some shady thoughts, thoughts about that family, family right? 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 You would say, oh, are they from the same mother? <laughs> or same father? Right? You wonder. What about this? Look at this. Do we see here, again, look at these twins. Again, genetic, genetic expression is in the family. So. How did we get all of our different uh, uh, colors and shapes and sizes? It was through environment, right? When those of us who are Asians went to Asia, the environment there shaped us so we have darker hair and a little bit lighter brown. Those who went down into Africa, right, African continent, it was very hot there with the sun, so because the sun happens, right? right? What, what happens? happens? It, it turns, turns on a gene, gene in the skin, and, and when that gene, gene in the skin turns on, the melanocytes produces melanin, and, and then, then they became darker brown. brown. You know, you know that's, that's why you can see a Caucasian, Caucasian tanning out in the beach, beach right? right? They, they want to get, get more brown. brown. What, what happens? happens? Do they get brown? Yes! 
Speciation happens before our eyes, right? You go to the tanning bed, you, just, you sit under there, you turn browner, right? Speci that is speciation. Okay. So, how are we as Christians supposed to look at people? Right? My friends and family, we are one family, right? So, when you go out, and you look at the bum on the street. <laughs> oh, he's family. He's family. He just became that way. How does that change your perspective? Do you want to help him or not? Yes. He's your family. If you saw your close relative, brother or sister, going down that path, what would you want to do? You'd want to? Help them, yeah, right? right? My friends, it is time to look at race as our, our human uh, beings, fellow human beings, the way God looks at us. He sees us all as his children. So, how shall we look at it? Shade and not color. People groups. Cultures, Cultures, and not, not races. races. All, All are, are colored, color. not, not just some. And, and what? what? We, are we are related, related to everyone, everyone. Not, not just, just close, close family. family. Amen. Amen. There's a song, I was, when I was researching this, uh, one of the speakers pointed this out, and I thought this was wonderful, this was awesome. Everyone knows this song. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black. Oh, whoops, I just saw that. Black and white. All are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Well, he said, maybe we should change that to this. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Shades of brown from dark to light. All are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. That changes things, right? You and I no longer do we think of each other as colored or uncolored. We're just different shades. Some of us have big noses. Some of us have... Little, little noses. noses. Look, Look at my nose. nose. It's flat. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Some of us have dark hair. hair. Some, Some of us have light hair. hair. But, but what, what? We, we are, are all? all? That's right. right. One, One family. family. This, this is God's, God's answer, answer to racism. racism. You, don't you don't have to go, go woke. You don't, don't have, have to go, go whatever, whatever the world is telling you. Because as you know, even the woke movement is racist. You know what they say? That all the, their evils are because of the white race. That's racism. No. All the evils of this world is because of sin and Satan. And there is only one, if you want to say woke, movement that is true. And that is God's movement. Only God's movement. And we as Christians need to stop going into this left camp and this right camp and this camp and that camp. You and I are family. I'm sorry. You may not like how each other look, how we look. <laughs> but we're family. Oh, yeah, he didn't get the good genes over there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right? But we're all family. If we're all family, how do we treat each other? As Jesus treated us. My, My friends, friends, is this a message of hope? Is, is this, this a message, message of love? love? Yes. We are we to are love one another. another. Let's, Let's change, change our, our thinking. thinking. How, How many of you want, want to change your thinking? thinking? And say, say yes, yes, I want to be. <laughs> I, I now, now know, know that the concept of races, races is wrong and, and that, that we, we are, are now, we are all, all the true concept, concept is being one family. One, one race. race. I say, yes, yes Lord, Lord, I accept, I accept that, that in my life. life. 
and I accept you in my life and change my heart. If you want that, say amen. Thank you.